Hey guys, it's Poe back again with Let's Get Techie. Today we're finally taking a look at our first Ryzen CPU. We have picked up the R7-1700 Non-X. Today we're going to be comparing that against Intel's i7-5820K. Now this Intel chip has 6 cores and 12 threads while our Ryzen CPU has 8 cores and 16 threads but these two chips are comparable in price. That's why we decided to put them up, <clears throat> excuse me, put them up against each other. Um, so another thing that we did that was a little bit different than some of the other videos that you might see or have seen, we decided to go with an RX 480 as our graphics card for testing. Um, reason being is I'm not 100% sold yet on lowering the resolution being the best way to judge what future performance of a CPU might be. Um, but nevertheless, that's the way we've chosen to do it. We're going to run some synthetic benchmarks. We're also going to do some gaming benchmarks, obviously. Um, these gaming benchmarks were ran at 720p, 1080p, and 1440p. Uh, we did also overclock both CPUs, so we'll have those numbers in the graphs as well. Um, I do want to give you a disclaimer right now. If you're not here for the raw data um, and you are not fond of watching slide after slide of performance numbers, this video is probably not for you and feel free to go ahead and skip this one and we'll catch you in the next one. Uh, we do have a lot of good data but I know that's sometimes not what people uh, are looking for in a video. So with that disclaimer, let's go ahead and take a look at the performance and we'll recap at the end. So editing Poe thought of one more thing that he wanted to add before we looked at the performance. Um, all of this was done prior to any of the optimizations. Um, we were running the release BIOS on our MSI B350 Tomahawk board. Um, the only differences really that, that I've seen compared to other videos, uh, GTA 5 is probably going to be changed a little bit. I will link uh, one of Gamers Nexus's videos in the description. Steve just went back and redid all of his testing showing the differences between release Ryzen and where Ryzen is at now. There wasn't a ton of difference or much at all in most of the titles, but I will link that down in the description and you can compare that as well and see uh, if any of the games that you're looking to play on this chip uh, have changed any from what my numbers are.
right, guys, those are the numbers. So, me personally, I would not have a problem recommending uh, a Ryzen CPU for gaming with an asterisk. I don't think that I would purchase Ryzen if all you're doing is gaming and normal everyday tasks like web browsing, emailing, Facebook, Instagram, although Instagram I think is more on your phone. Anyway, I wouldn't recommend it if all you're doing is gaming. I would recommend it to someone who maybe does content creation but still enjoys gaming. Um, and you're probably yelling at the screen right now saying, but for the same amount of money you can get a 7700K. And you can, but this review was pretty much targeted at someone who is going to have some type of professional workload, uh, some type of content creation. Um, as everyone knows right now, most games cannot leverage uh, a vast amount of cores. So we're going into this assuming that you're looking at this for more than just gaming, and I think it hits the nail on the head as far as being a good all-around CPU. Um, as you can see also, the temperatures were not bad at all. All of the testing for the Ryzen CPU was done with the stock cooler that ships with the chip. Um, I was very happy with how it performed. I would have no issues at all recommending this. One of the things that I want you to keep in mind is that we did all of this testing with an RX 480. Um, and we didn't see that much uh, degradation as far as FPS goes when we lowered the resolution or I wouldn't necessarily say lower the resolution when we ran at 1080p for the most part they were spot on the same there were a few games where they were different if you're dropping down to 720p yes there was some difference but again not as much as I expected um, again I'm still just not sold on lowering the resolution and using that to predict how the CPU is going to perform later on in its life so with that that is going to finish up this video I appreciate you guys watching. Please leave us a like if you liked it. Um, get subscribed if you aren't already and make sure to check us out on social media. We will see you in the next one.